It's Maxwell House Coffee Time, starring George Burns and Gracie Allen. With yours truly, Bill Goodwin, and the music of Meredith Wilson and his orchestra. For deep down laughs and listening enjoyment, it's George and Gracie. And for deep down coffee drinking enjoyment, it's Maxwell House. With extra flavor in the blend because of choice Latin American coffee, skillfully combined. Extra flavor in the cup because Radiant Roast develops the full flavor of every coffee bean. And the result is that today more people buy Maxwell House than any other brand of coffee in the world. Well, it's morning in the Burns' home, and George has just come down to breakfast. How about a little food, dear? All right, George. But first, there's something I'd like to ask you. What? Well, our radio show goes on this evening, and my club, the Beverly Hills Uplift Society, would like to take it over. Oh, no. You sneaked those dames on the program last week, and they set radio back 50 years. (laughs) Oh, no, that's not fair, George. We simply made a few changes. Some program. Everybody's laughing at me. Well, you see, that's one of the changes we made. (laughs) Forget it. But, George, the girls are simply dying to get on the air. Then let them fly around with the other bats. (laughs) That's my program, and it's going to stay my program. Well, of course it is. We'll be on it, but you'll direct the whole thing. Direct it? Well, yes, because that takes brains, and you're the brainy one in this family. Why, compared to you, I'm only brilliant. (laughs) That's very flattering, but... Your your darling little head just bulges with brains. Look, uh... That's what makes your ears stick out that way. (laughs) Thanks for the explanation, Oh, you'll love being a director, George. We'll get you a chair with your name on it. What am I supposed to do with that? Well, you're supposed to sit in it. Of course, a man as clever as you might have a better idea. <laughs> oh, sure, sure. I'll do and we'll get you a lovely desk with ten telephones on it. Ten telephones? Yes, a great executive needs at least ten. Uh, suppose you can't make a long distance call because of a telephone strike. You just make ten short ones and add them together. <laughs> Yes, that's convenient. And the best feature is that you never come to the studio. You stay right here at home. Gracie, the Beverly Hills Uplift Society is not taking over my program. Oh, be progressive, George. Sooner or later, women are going to take over radio, and you can start the movement. Nothing doing. But your name will go down in history. People will always speak of you as that progressive George Burns. That clever progressive George Burns. That brilliant, clever, progressive George Burns. Dynamic? (laughs) Scintillating? No program. No program, no. (laughs) And not only do I want those dames kept off my program, but I want them kept out of my house. Yes, dear. Mm. Every time they meet here, they come into the kitchen before I awake and gobble up all the bacon and eggs. Yes, dear. And now I'm ready for breakfast. (laughs) Yes, dear. What would you like? Bacon and eggs and a piece of toast. I'll get you a piece of toast. (laughs) You mean... They're in the den. In the den, yes. Well, get those dames out or I'll throw them out. You can't, George. Meredith Wilson rents the den and he said we could meet there. Yeah, the poor jerk lets you meet in his room because you laugh at his terrible jokes. Why, you women even... You even took him into your club. Well, it was perfectly legitimate. We made him an honorary woman. (laughs) Okay, you run along and break that meeting up as soon as you can. I'll fix my toast and have a piece of cheese with it. Oh, that reminds me. Our new member, Madame De Silva, doesn't like bacon and eggs. Uh, don't tell me she she ate ate the the cheese. Uh Uh-huh. I'll uh, see you later, dear. Quiet, girls, quiet, please. Well, Gracie, did you talk George into staying home so we could take over the program again? Well, 
No, girls, I'm sorry to report that Plan A, making him think he was an intelligent director, didn't work. Oh, oh dear. What a yeah. Unfortunately, he was a little too smart to believe that he was intelligent. <laughs> oh, what a shame. And we had such a cultural half hour all prepared. Yes. I was going to sing 30 or 40 songs. <laughs> Well, fellow members, I guess it's up to me to clear away the gloom with a little joke. I got a pipperoo about brides, if someone would care to mention the subject of brides. It's your turn, Madame de Silva. Very well. Many years ago, I was a bride. Ha! Speaking of brides, I'm a <laughs> recently married gentleman who said to his bride, uh, Sweetheart, there's something wrong with this pudding you have prepared for me. Whereupon the perplexed bride responded, There can't be. The cookbook says it's perfectly delicious. Oh. <laughs> Is that the finish, Meredith? Yes. Oh. All right, girls, let's show our appreciation. <laughs> <laughs> I knew it was a pepperoo. Now, girls, there, there must be some way to keep George out of the studio this evening so we can put on our show. Plan A was a failure, so let's get to work on Plan B. Any suggestions? Uh, we might give him something to make him dopey. Nature beat us to that one. <laughs> Uh, any other suggestions? Well, well I think we'll all have to fly. All right, girls, then it's settled. Plan B will definitely be the bathtub plan. Well, hello, Uplifters. Oh, hello, 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 hello. How are you? Say, George says you girls are trying to get him off the radio program again. How come? We don't want any men on the program. Oh, now, wait a minute. You can't get rid of me, you know. I represent the sponsor. You can't go on the air without me. Say, that's right. How can we get around this? Well, there's only one way. We'll have to make Bill an honorary woman, too. Then he can join our club. Oh, no. I, I don't want to be a woman, not me. But women have lots of fun, Bill. Don't the women who go out with you have fun? Well, sure, but that's just it. And if I'm a woman, I won't be able to take myself out. <laughs> And if I can't go out with me, what's the fun of being a woman? Oh, Bill, won't you change your mind? You like being a woman. Sure you will. Oh, come on, be a woman. Yes, join us, Bill. <laughs> Speaking as one who has just recently become an honorary woman, I can recommend it. You can, Meredith? Yes. As you know, I used to be very shy and bashful around women. But after one week of being around the uplifters, other women don't frighten me at all. <laughs> that I can understand. Then you refuse to become an honorary woman? You won't join our team? Oh, no, Gracie. If I join your team, it'll spoil all my scrimmaging. Oh, well, very well. Uh, Blanche, as vice president in charge of blackmail, can you dig a little persuader out of your file? I think I have some interesting data on Mr. Goodwin. Oh, no, not that again. Here we are, December 10th. Bill Goodwin gave an engagement ring to a beautiful redhead named Patricia Ryan. Oh, so that's her last name. I wondered about that. <laughs> on that same day, Bill Goodwin also gave engagement rings to the following girls... Elizabeth Jones, Florence Riley, Mary Edith Stahl, Natalie Galen, Ruth Henning, and Geraldine Bojo. Well, now, wait a minute. If those girls find out that I have more than one fiancé, I'll be in hot water. Hand me the phone, Blanche. I'll light the fire. Oh. <laughs> have a heart, Gracie. Natalie Galen's father's a big game hunter. He'll shoot me. Don't worry. You look very fetching on the wall of his den. <laughs> yes, you'll be the first Hollywood wolf ever stuffed. <laughs> Okay, okay, you got me. I'll join your club. Oh, good. Here's a copy of the Beverly Hills Uplift Society Oath of Allegiance. Now, raise your right hand and read it. Holy smoke, this is going to change my whole life. <laughs> On my honor, I do solemnly swear that henceforth, women will come first with me. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> well, isn't going to be as big a change as I thought. <laughs> Please, madam, this is a solemn occasion. Lena. <laughs> I do hereby agree to share with my sister members of the club any and all treasures such as my beauty secrets, silk undies, and pre-war girdles. <laughs> oh, now, wait a minute, Gracie. I don't have to swear to that, do I? Well, no, I guess not. Good. 
I don't mind sharing the beauty secrets, but I'm running awful low on the other two. <laughs> Read on. And last, I do hereby declare that my great objective in life shall be that of every woman. Oh, no, I can't read this. Hand me the phone, Blanche. Okay, okay. My great objective in life shall be that of every woman... motherhood. (laughs) Congratulations, Bill, old man. Uh, old girl. Well, now that Bill is a full-fledged member of the Beverly Hills Uplift Society... He can help us put across Plan B. What's Plan B? That's our next plan, to keep George from showing up at the radio broadcast so we can take it over. Yes, under Plan B, George winds up in the bathtub and all his clothes are gone. Oh, Gracie, that's a low, mean trick. That's underhanded stuff. Surely we wouldn't do a thing like that. (laughs) He hasn't been a woman very long, has he? Now here's Meredith Wilson and his chiffon arrangement of Carolina Moore. Don't you think when folks hear that familiar strain, just about everybody knows what you're playing? Oh, I'm sure they do, Bill. I think practically everyone knows Carolina Moon. Yes, the name Carolina has found its way into American hearts through familiar American music, just as the Carolinas themselves have been such a familiar part of the American scene through the years. Virginia Dare, Sir Walter Raleigh, Roanoke Island, the Appalachian and Blue Ridge Mountains are only a few of the names that come to us from the colorful history of the Carolinas. I can't help thinking, too, how today there's another name that's become part and parcel of our American scene, of so many American homes. It's the name Maxwell House, signifying a coffee blend of true distinction, combining these fine Latin American coffees. Manizales for mellowness. Medellins for richness. Other choice Latin American coffees for vigor. And Bucaramangas for full body. So it's no wonder that the famous name Maxwell House is known all over this great land of ours for full-flavored, fine coffee. Good to the last drop. Let's go back to the Burns home where plan B to keep George off the radio program is being launched by Gracie. Under this plan, she gets George into the bathtub and swipes his clothes. Personally, I don't see how she's going to do it, but you know Gracie. So won't you come into the den and sing for the girls, George? They're waiting to hear your glorious voice. You sure this isn't a trick to get me off the program? Get you off the program? Why, we want you to sing for the entire half hour. Don't you want to broadcast culture? We do. And what could be more culture than your voice? Why, you give the world a pearl of melody every time you open the oyster of your mouth. Well... Come on, darling. The girls are waiting to hear you sing. 
Okay, I'll give him a little thrill. I don't understand. Oh, here he is, girl. The Nightingale of Beverly Hills. Sugar Throat Burns. <laughs> Any special requests? Oh, singing, Mr. Haven. I'm sure all the girls will swoon when they hear that, won't you, girl? Oh, that's yes, exactly. I mean, okay, okay. <laughs> Ain't Miss Haven. No! <laughs> Wait a minute, I wasn't singing yet. And now for his next number, Mr. Next Bur- number? <laughs> I didn't do my first ditty. For his next number, Mr. Burns will sing something which I know will be especially thrilling to our own classical singer, Madame De Silva. Shortening bread. But I haven't even started eating Miss Behaven. Shortening bread for Madame De Silva. <clears throat> Mammy's little baby loves shortening, shortening. No! <laughs> Mammy's little baby loves shortening bread. No! Mammy's... No! Mammy's little... No! Mammy's little baby... No! Madam De Silva, control your ecstasy. That was not the ecstasy. What? It was, it was joy, dear. That's much louder than ecstasy. Why, you're better than Nelson Eddy. You, you really think well, so? Well, certainly, and much more convincing. Why, when you sang Shortening Bread, I could actually smell it. <laughs> the same goes for Ain't Misbehaving. <laughs> Gracie, listen, how does this get him into the bathtub so he can grab his clothes? You'll see. Uh, yes, girls, my husband was magnificent, but you haven't heard anything until you hear him sing in the bathtub. <laughs> Oh, I see, I see. <laughs> well, it's true. The bathtub seems to give my voice an added resonance and depth. Yeah, why don't you jump right in now, darling? Well, I've had one bath today, <laughs> but I like baths. Good. I guess I'm just a caveman at heart. Makes me feel good to get rid of my clothes for a while. Yes, well, this bath is going to keep you happy for a long time. <laughs> okay, now listen closely, girls. I may hit a high C. My hammer's new baby. Uh, okay, girls, our objective is in sight. As soon as he gets into the tub, um, we'll get all his clothes. Blanche, you take his other suits from the closet. All right. Uh, Clara, you take his shirts and ties. Okay. Madame De Silva, you bring his shoes and socks. That'll be but, but, Gracie, what if he wraps a towel around himself and chases it? Oh, don't worry. There isn't a towel in the house that'll go all the way around George. <laughs> now, hurry. We'll meet at Bill Goodwin's house in five minutes. <laughs> Good afternoon, Mrs. Burns. <laughs> I've been ringing your door buzzer a long time. Uh, you look awfully old and tired today, Mrs. Burns. I'm not Mrs. Burns. I'm Mr. Burns. <laughs> but you're wearing a dress. I know I'm wearing a dress. It's all the clothes I could find. My goodness, I didn't know the shortage of men's clothes was that bad. <laughs> Look, Mr. I hope the returning servicemen won't have to wear dresses. <laughs> the poor fellas won't know who's whistling at who. <laughs> you don't understand, Mr. Postman. I have clothes, but my wife's club, the Beverly Hills Uplift Society, took them. But why? Why? They want to take over my radio program. Naturally, I can't do a broadcast in just my underwear. You're right. Let's not kill television before it gets started. (laughs) Well, those dames haven't outsmarted me. I called NBC and told them not to let any women into my studio tonight. A shrewd move. Hmm. (laughs) Certainly is a shrewd move. We can't let women get the upper hand. We men are the masters, and we're going to stay the masters. getting better all the time. Well, so long, Mr. Postman. See you later. Goodbye, Mr. Burns. <laughs> what was that for? That short dress shows your legs. Not bad, huh? I wish my wife had legs like yours. Really? Yes. Then when she got after me, I could run between them and escape. <laughs> 
goodbye. Remember, keep smiling. <laughs> Well, girls, are you all comfortable? Oh, yes. Charming little place you have, Bill. Oh, thanks. I like the way your walls are simply covered with pictures. There must be hundreds of them. Well, yes, but they're not so good. I'm having some better ones taken next week. <laughs> oh, and now, uh, now that you're one of us, Bill, we can tell you that taking over George's program is only the beginning. Really? Oh, yes. According to our plan, women will gradually take over all the programs. Well, but how can women fill the place of singers like uh, Crosby and Sinatra and Haynes? Oh, that's easy. The place taken by all three of them can be filled by Kate Smith alone. <laughs> You're so right. But you'll have to replace the classical singers too, Gracie. What about John Charles Thomas? We'll replace those three with the Andrew sisters. <laughs> You're... You're really crowding the men right out of the picture. Yes, and then the Old Maids of America will sponsor a quiz program for male contestants. If any man misses a question, he has to marry one of the sponsors. And the questions won't be easy. Yeah. <laughs> Isn't that a wonderful plan? Grand. We'll call the program, Take It and Love It. <laughs> Tracy, suppose the guy isn't happy with her. Well, then he can tell his problem to Madam Anthony. You certainly have figured all the angles. Yeah, we're tired of it being a man's world. <laughs> and when we women take over radio, it'll be run smoothly and efficiently. No quarrels, no jealousies, no, no dissension. Sounds great. Yes. We'll, uh, let's decide what each of us will do on the program this evening, huh? Madam De Silva, what will you contribute? I intend to sing the bell song from Lock Me. <laughs> Why don't you sing a song about the Liberty Bell, dear? Why? Would that suit my voice better? Yes, it has a crack in it. <laughs> Why? You tone-deaf ignoramus! Item one, solo by Madame de Silva. Now, uh, what will you contribute, Clara? Well, I thought I'd give a talk on fashion trends. I design all my own clothes, you know. Did you design that peculiar garment that you're wearing? <laughs> yes, and what's peculiar about it? It resembles a tent pitched by a very young boy scout. <laughs> oh, why, you dowdy old frump. Item two, fashion talk by Clara Bagley. Now, what about you, Blanche? I'll give a Shakespearean recitation. You? Why not? When I was a girl, I learned everything Shakespeare wrote. When you were a girl, he hadn't written much. <laughs> Why, you illiterate hillbilly. Item three, Shakespearean recitation by Blanche Morton. Now, you see how smoothly we settle things, Bill? Yeah, I'm fascinated. <laughs> well, let's run through the opening. Bill, you read the announcement. Okay, Gracie. <clears throat> Presenting the Beverly Hills Uplift Society in radio's first all-woman program. Ah, oh, beautiful lady. <laughs> Women of the world, arise. Let us shake off the chains of slavery and build a better world. A world in which there will be no men, just women and children. <laughs> Lady. And now, for this evening's first tidbit of culture, here's Blanche Morton with a Shakespearean recitation. <clears throat> the quality of mercy is not strained. It droppeth as a gentle rain from heaven. Upon the place beneath it is twice blessed. It blesseth him that gives and him that takes. Tis mightiest of the time, mightiest... Mrs. And... Morton, please. Who would listen to that? Well, I guess you could do it better. Well, certainly. Listen to this. <laughs> the quality of Maxwell House is tops. It poureth from the fragrant coffee pot into the cup beneath. It is twice blessed. It blesseth him that pours and him that drinks. Tis tastiest of the tastiest. Now, you see, people listen to that because it's familiar to them. They know that Maxwell House is appetizing, rich, full-bodied, mellow coffee at its full-flavored best, good to the last drop. But those are not the words of William Shakespeare, the bard of Stratford-on-the-Avon? No, those are the words of William Goodwin, the bard of Maxwell-on-the-House. <laughs> and 
believe me, those words are known everywhere because more people buy and enjoy Maxwell House than any other brand of coffee in the world. Why, everybody who... Come in. Good afternoon, Mr. Goodwin. Here's your mail. Oh, thank you, Mr. Postman. Oh, say, uh, I guess you're kind of surprised to find a dozen women in my house. Yes, that's not as many as usual. <laughs> Mr. Postman, I don't suppose you saw anyone at my house. Oh, I saw your husband, Mrs. Burns. Well, how could that be? You couldn't see the tub from the front door. Yes, I could. He's the one who opened it. <laughs> he was wearing one of your dresses. Oh, well, come on, girls. Let's get to the studio and do the broadcast. Yeah. Oh, yeah. oh, oh, just a moment, ladies. I'm afraid it's no use. Mr. Burns told NBC that no women were to be allowed in his studio tonight. Oh, well, that does it. Well, we might as well take George's clothes back to... George's clothes? That's it. We'll put on his clothes and walk right in. But, Gracie, even in a suit, my figure won't look like a man. Well, we'll pad you a little, dearie. <laughs> now, just a minute. The girls, girls, hurry and put on George's suit. We'll go to the studio as men. Well, goodbye, girl, uh, fellow. Well, whatever you are, remember, keep smiling. <laughs> Now, look, Mr. Postman, I know you've got orders not to let any women into Studio D, but I'm not a woman. Now, beat it, sister. Look, I've got on my wife's dress because my clothes were stolen. I'm a man. With them hips? <laughs> Honest, I'm George Burns. Oh, sure, and I'm Lauren Bacall. <laughs> you ain't crashing this gate, sister. I tell you, I'm George Burns, and if I don't get... Well, it... good evening, Mr. Doorman. Evening, Mr. Wilson. Meredith, you're just in time. Oh, no. It's Gracie and the Uplifters. And they're wearing ma they're wearing my suits. You really are screwy, sister. Honest. All those men are women. The little fellow in the green suit is my wife. <laughs> These are new members of my orchestra, Mr. Doorman. Uh, Mr. Morton? Trombone. Mr. Bagley? Bass drum. Mr. De Silva? Zither. <laughs> and uh, Mr. Allen. Pipe organ. <laughs> Okay, gents, go right on through. Gracie, you can't do this to me. One side, madam. We have a program to do. Oh, this is the end. Join us again next week when we'll all be back. George Burns, Gracie Allen... Meredith Wilson and his orchestra, and yours truly, Bill Goodwin. Until next Thursday, then, good night and good luck from the makers of Maxwell House. America's number one brand of coffee. Always good to the last drop. Gracie, I have a surprise for you. Next week, our guest star will be Kay Kaiser. Oh, wonderful. When we make him an honorary woman, we'll have a Southern Bell in our club. Oh, no. The Beverly Hills Uplift Society, not next week. All right, dear. In honor of Kay Kaiser, we'll call ourselves the Bull Weevil Uplift Society. Gracie, those dames will not be on the program, or my name is not George Burns. Good night, Sam. Good night, everybody. <laughs> Stay tuned to this station because Dinah Shore's Open House is coming on in just a second. Dinah's special guest tonight is Rudy Valley. Oh, goody, goody, jello pudding tonight. It tastes like grandma's only more so. You ain't kidding, that's right. And, and just, just as jello, jello, six delicious locked in flavors can't be beaten. So the proof of jello pudding's in the eating. The jello twins are hard to find, but keep on looking in your store. When sugar shortages are over, there'll be more. Just the taste of jello pudding or a jello, and you know it's the one and only J E L L O.